All right, here's sign Gemini. This one's a stretch. We had to switch up locations on this particular video. But welcome back to Emperor's Light Tarot. It's me, Tony, your spiritual tarot guide. We're going to get right into your love messages for today to close out the air sign readings. Hopefully, you guys had a good day today. Come into the video, liking the video, and subscribing to the channel so that we continue to grow, add value. All right, don't force the messages to fit. You'll know if the message or the story fits for you. Let this be at least a mild form of therapeutic storytelling for entertainment purposes, at the least. But the messages have been going well today for the air signs. I uploaded a collective air sign reading earlier today. It was pretty good. And then I did Libras after lunch with a twin flame reading. We also did an Aquarius reading about an hour and a half, two hours ago or so. That was a two flame, uh, twin flame reading as well. So I think all the air signs are currently uh, manifesting partnerships. Maybe you guys are doing networking and uh, for love and romance, which we usually do on this channel. You're definitely calling in your soulmates, your divine counterparts at this time. So let's get into it for Gemini. All right, highest messages of love and light for air sign Gemini this evening, spirit, please. What's the highest messages of love and light for Gemini? What do they need to know in regards to love and romance? What's currently surrounding them in regards to love and romance with the current love energetics? Let's meditate on the energy. We got a jumper, queen of gems, the matriarch that is a wife. Sorry about the background noise. It's just atmosphere to let you know I'm not doing readings in a graveyard, right? <laughs> People think tarot is devil worship and evil. This is the whole point of Twin Flames, right? We come to this earth plane to break all these generational curses and false cycles. People are overly religious. Even some people in the spiritual tarot community, right? They get over obsessive by certain things. And they forget their purpose, right? You got another jumper here. I don't know what it is yet. All right, so I just wanted to get the messages primed, show you guys that I'm actually shuffling <laughs> on camera. Let's get into uh, your current energies in regards to the matters of the heart. All right, grounding your reading today, Gemini. We got the Nine of Embers, the Wounded Warrior. Sagittarius energy, a karmic journey. Okay. First card was the Queen of Gems, aka Pentacles. So again, the matriarch. This could be a feminine business owner, right? The mother, the wife, the force witch. So this could be anything from a you know a woman that's going into real estate, taxes, um, interior decorating. This could even be right a uh, a woman turns a house into a home, right? The wife. This could even be an entrepreneur starting a uh, business out of the home. Let's get into it. Enough explanation on the Queen of Gems, right? Moonlight, yeah, definitely feminine energy at this time. So you have a feminine headed towards you, right? For you fellas, or for you women out there, you have a. Man that tends to know how to understand women, right? Coming out in his Queen of Gems energy or his feminine moon energy. Okay? Moon symbolizes Pisces. So it could be a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio as well. Someone very dreamy, right? Someone very intuitive or psychic. Five of Embers, competition. It's change, it's conflict, right? This could be the energy surrounding your person or surrounding you at this time. We got two cards coming up, the Knight of Bubbles, Romance, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, again, resonating with the Moon card, and the Fool. So Aries Energy. Your person may have Aries in their chart somewhere. The Fool is also indicative of a new adventure, right? It's someone with a, a lot of faith, right? They're wanting to start some sort of a new journey, or they could be an adventurer. Mm -hmm. They're not afraid to take action, right? As we typically see the fool about to get uh, aloofly walk off the side of a mountain, right? So again, Aries, the firstborn, right? Someone with a childlike state of mind, 
again, I like to throw in the fact that the fool can sometimes be a prankster or like a jokester, a comedian even, which is why I named it the jester in my deck. Right? The jester in uh, ancient times was pretty much the only one that can make fool of the king without getting his head chopped off, right? In the name of making the king or the emperor laugh, right? Let's clarify the queen of gems. Pandora's box. The wheel of fortune shows up. A jackpot. So the queen of gems is definitely able to produce some sort of a jackpot. Or provide some sort of a wish fulfillment, right? So this feminine here, or this queen of pentacles uh, archetype or character or person here is coming in with a lot of... Um, they may have strong will, right? Manifest destiny type individual. But yeah, they can come in with a lot of um, abundance, finances. Mm -hmm. They may have had to take some sort of a gamble, right? Again, when you gamble on yourself, that's the best gamble in the world. Not to encourage gambling or anything, right? But yeah, this could be turning the wheel of destiny or fortune in your favor. I look at the wheel of fortune as your own internal compass, your own internal compass, right? Speaking your wishes into the world, into the universe, and the universe providing a way for you to obtain the things that you want. It's also my wedding ring card. So again, the wedding ring card comes out on top of this wife um, archetype here in the uh, the matriarch. The eight of storms on top of moonlight it's reminding me of like a moonlight dance or a moonlight ritual or a moonlight prayer now this could be some sort of a um this could be some sort of a mental prison that someone has okay so this is coming off as dreams to me really good it could be some sort of a prayer right For Gemini, let's see. Nine of Swords showing up. Some a little bit of nervousness here. Another karmic number. Remember the the, the energy for this reading was grounded by a wow. What's all the noise? So <laughs> we got noise coming from every angle here. So your person there. So your person has a lot of distractions around them at this time. This may be other karmic partners or just, you know, the matrix, right? The, the burdens of the matrix, whether it's the system or whatever the case may be. Yeah, on top of the five of embers. Mm -hmm. They're having to battle through some sort of a tough change or ending out some sort of a karmic cycle that, um, that they've been presented with or that they've been dealing with. It seems more like they're coming out on top in this situation, though. They're wanting to communicate with you here, bringing in this romance. Let's clarify the Knight of Bubbles, the Queen of Bubbles. Divine feminine energy showing up in this reading. All right? There's not much higher you can go than the Divine Feminine. She, she has not come up yet, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. We have the Queen of Bubbles. So, again, resonating with the Moon card, you could be dealing with a Water Sign, Pisces, Cancer, or a Scorpio. Very supportive, very healthy. Again, you could be dealing with uh, maybe like a doctor or a nurse or something like that. Again, with the Queen of Pentacles, it could be someone that's into finances. Again, a real estate agent or something like that. Or just a mother, right? And the same thing with the Queen of Bubbles. This could be a uh, feminine that likes to uh, live near water. It's some sort of a healer, possibly a clairvoyant. Yeah, with the... Wheel of Fortune here, which is my crystal ball card. They're definitely some sort of a clairvoyant. So they could be a reader like myself. Or they, they just know how to turn, you know, turn a sick uh, turn a, a sick person into a heal. They know how to heal people, which is turning, you know, fixing someone's fate, fixing someone's destiny. Let's clarify the Fool card. The Knight of Wands. So we got the Knight of Bubbles and the Knight of Wands. They feel that they feel equally yoked with you. So they could be approaching you. Um, they feel uh, chemistry between you guys. Now the Knight of Wands could be indicative of a fire sign energy, right? Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This person can be, well, the Knight of Wands is indicative of what, like I call it a sexual chip on someone's shoulder, but it's definitely venturing out. People see it as the in and, in and out non-committal energy. This person could be testing the waters here. 
comes out on top of the Aries, uh, the Fool card. So, yeah, so they're basically going on a journey. I also look at the Knight of Wands as like rites of passage. Mm hmm, mm hmm. 10 10 just passed on the timer. Page of Storms. They could be trying to find themselves or they could be spying on you, right? Find themselves, aka trying to find you or trying to get to know you more. Comes out on top of the Wheel of Fortune and the Queen of Pentacles. It may be some, yeah, if it's a twin flame, it's some sort of a, a teacher-student type of um, type of dynamic here. There's usually an age difference here. What else are we getting here? Let's clarify the Eight of Storms, the Two of Bubbles. Yeah, definitely some sort of a strong friendship or soulmate connection that they're viewing with you. Wanting to share a cup of love with you here. This is what's constantly on their mind, right? They could be using the law of attraction, right? Manifest destiny, whatever's constantly constantly on the mind, uh, it attracts. But it could also be anxiety. So they have to be careful not to manifest you in some sort of a toxic way. Because they're closing out a cycle, right? It's not always about the race. It's about how you end the race, right? Because we've seen, uh, you know about the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? That, tor that hare thought he was about to be that tortoise, <laughs> But we all know how that story ended. So, uh, in the in the in the words of uh, one of our famous uh, poets, Lil Wayne, it's not a, it's not about. Um, oh, I forgot the lyric. Something about it's not what you lose; it's about what you walk away with. Yeah, it's not about what you walk away from. It's about what you walk away with, right? So, again, hmm, Nine of Swords. Yeah, this is the, the karmic part here that I'm worried about. This Nine of Swords on top of the Five of Embers. It seems like a lot of distractions, a lot of outside distractions, competitions, or what have you. You may be concerned about this as well. The Four of Bubbles. Yeah, it seems like that's all that they are. There are distractions here. Your person is a, some sort of a, um, mm, the Four of Cups is a missed opportunity. Um, for me, it's also a meditative state. They could just be um, mulling over their options or whatever the case may be. I don't know what options they think they have. Right? Sometimes people need to put certain things in perspective, right? <laughs> Again, what, I, what was I saying earlier about, um, uh, what was it last night? Like what's higher than number one? If your person is right in front of you, I don't know why you're like fishing for people. But there is no telling, right? There's no telling. People can definitely choose to opt out of, of any relationship, a friendship, uh, a romantic relationship, right? People, divorces are common nowadays. So even with soul contracts and twin flame contracts, people can opt out of these things if they don't feel like they want to go through the whole healing journey. Let's clarify the queen of bubbles, the knight of bubbles. The King of Embers, leadership here, very sexual energy, very attractive and powerful. This is a very strategic individual as well, the King of Embers. They are very driven. I'm getting very focused as well. This could be a naturalist. Again, this person could be very active, a mover and a shaker. Yeah, so we go from the not... Mm, do we have the page here? No. So we go from the Knight of Wands, which would be like, you know, immature in and out activity to actual King of Embers. So that's someone that's mature, right? Mature sexual expressions and knowing the power of um, deception and that sort of thing, right? Again, we could definitely be dealing with a, um, just like this Queen of uh, Pentacles can be masculine. This King of Embers can be feminine, right? They're both witches, right? Or just very powerful manifestors, right? We don't have to label them some, you know, negative word, right? Ooh, there we go. The King of Bubbles or the King of Cups as your last card showing up on top of Knight of Wands. So, yeah, they're sexually mature. Yeah, they're attracted to you romantically and sexually. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to take a leap of faith towards you. Comes out on top of the full card. So let me just go ahead and show you here the queen of bubbles and the king of bubbles. So they see you as their person, their divine counterpart, their match, right? 
if it's any consolation, you may want to watch the uh, the Libra reading as the King and Queen of Cups showed up in the Libra's reading as well. I uploaded maybe an hour ago. Yeah. But yeah, watch all the air sign readings. They should resonate with you at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your moon rising, Venus, north node placements. So yeah, I like to see it. I like to see it. Your person. Yeah, they know that you're their person. They know that you're their match. Mm -hmm. Because I, I had an epiphany. It's almost like. Like I said, like for me, a woman would have to prove her, not like it's like she's obligated to do so. Um, and this just goes, you have to work for anything you want. But like for me, especially since I've, I've already come out of a karmic situation, right? It's, it's like I vet women very seriously. So it would be uncomfortable to a woman to show herself or display herself in the most, in the most loving and supportive way so that... Um, I'm able to consciously and unconsciously, right, accept her, right? Just like a woman, you know, women go through karmic things as well. She, the man, he, he can't be a fucking player or play games. He would literally have to support, support her genuinely and genuinely love and care for her, right? So, yeah. Let's see Twin Flames here. Let's take a look at the, uh, the energy coming from the bottom five. The Nine of Embers, the karmic journey coming to a close, right? Nines are about closure. It's just you have to, in order to get to the 10, to the completion of the cycle, you have to go through all that stuff here. Temperance, exactly, the Earth Angel, Sagittarius energy, learning the lessons, right? Balance here. The mixing of the positive and the negative, the yin and the yang, the good and the bad, in order to become a wholly well-rounded person, right? Your person may have Sagittarius somewhere in their chart. Could very well be dealing with the Sagittarius as well. Here we go with the Hierophant, the Anointed One. This is marriage, right? The pastor or the preacher that anoints the, the couple, right? Taurus energy. Your person may have, you may be dealing with a Taurus, or they could have Taurus somewhere in their chart, majorly aspected, right? They're a business owner, an entrepreneur. Their signature would be worth a lot of uh, money, right? Ding, ding, ding. People like to hear that word, money. So, yeah, again, they're an entrepreneur of some sort. You can see it here. The queen of gems, that's a female entrepreneur. Justice here, again, business and pleasure showing up here. Uh, Libra for the Gemini. Mm -hmm. So your person may be a Libra or they may be a very honest, uh, trustworthy or um, genuine individual. They value relationships and networking. Eight of bubbles, detachment or walking away. So your person has mastered the law of attraction and the law of detachment. That message or that channel message, I don't think I've ever had that one. They mastered the law of attraction and the law of, of detachment. Yeah. And the queen of swords at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, they're very intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're very discerning. They're very independent, right? What's better than a person that's... Um, something about um, not needing anything, but wanting, right? You don't want someone to need you. Right, aka two people, they they only stay together or they have to stay together because they need each other. Whether it's you know we're in this three D realm, whether it's to pay bills or they have a child together, no, they want to be with each other. Right. <laughs> I was telling a joke to uh, who was it Aquarius about <laughs> an attractive person when a, when an attractive person actually when it, when an unattractive person actually finds someone that wants to be with them, you know it's genuine because it's like they're unattractive. So it was like, oh, I know they really want to be with me because <laughs> there's something about them that attracts them to me other than, for instance, looks, right? That's why sometimes you see mismatched mismatched couples. But yeah, we're not going to ramble on about that, right? It's, you know, looks, they fade at some point anyways. It's all about what's inside, right? The soul connection. That's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah, justice showing up in Libra. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, relationship. And then we saw the king and queen of bubbles show up in a reading, divine counterparts. The king and queen of the same suit. Now let's see. A relationship. <laughs> They're waiting to leap into this relationship with you here. Pandora's box. It could even be a marriage. 
moonlights. They're emotionally taken with you. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to nurture you here. Yeah, definitely with the king and queen of cups. We also had romance with the knight of cups. But yeah, there's a lot of emotions here. We have the two of cups here. There's a lot of emotions surrounding this energy, which is the most important thing, right? They they say, <laughs> the scientists and the philosophers, right? Again, the philosophers back in the days used to think that people made decisions with their hearts and not necessarily their brains, right? Mm -hmm. We know that love is the highest vibration of them all. Opposite of that is fear, right? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, another few other major arcana. The, the Knight of Wands shows their, how passionate they are to come towards you, right? The Page of Storms, they've been studying you, right? Every man should know their woman and every woman should know their man, right? It comes with the karmic relationship as well, right? They spy on each other. <laughs> So your person may be spying on you or just keeping tabs on you if they've passed whatever karmic ideas or feelings they have about your connection. And then this is the abundance of the, of the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The queen of gems. So one or both of you guys may be entrepreneurs. Most likely both of you because you're matching each other's vibes. In regards to numbers, there's not a whole lot here. We have um, two eights, the eight of storms, and the eight of bubbles. So this is just them constantly trying to manifest you, right? They have you on their mind, aka that Lil Wayne song, Money on My Mind. And then what's, it's another song from that same album as well. Um, uh, I can't remember it. But he's basically saying he's doing whatever he has to do. Um, to bring security back to um, the household, right? A masculine. And Lil Wayne is a Libra, the Empress, right? <laughs> One of the most successful rappers of our time. Mr. Carter himself. Let's get your break deck message. Something that I forgot to do for Aquarius. Let's go, Gemini. Very good message for you this evening. Like the video and subscribe to the channel so that we continue to grow. We got 2222 showing up on a timer. You know, that's about collaboration, synergy, working together, right? Mm -hmm. Peace and balance, that sort of thing. Last message, break deck message to confirm the reading in regards to this love relationship, this twin flame connection that exposed itself in the cardomancy for this evening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the reading. Again, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out the other playlists on the channel in regards to earth signs, I'm sorry, air signs, and possibly check out the twin flame uh, readings. We also have a pick a, chi uh, pick a car playlist. All right, one more shuffle. What's the break deck message for Gemini this evening? Pandora's box, the Wheel of Fortune, Seven of Gems. Yeah, they're wanting to invest in this. Dare I say, um, no, nah, I, I don't want to say that, actually. But yeah, pruning, gardening, right? This is my hourglass card. This is investing in something, right? Looking back over the things that you've built so far to, you know, make sure you have invested or to continue to reinvest into it, right? It's, it's Again, it's my gardening card. Maintenance. The Seven of Pentacles is for me. Time, again, the hourglass card, right? And then we have the Pandora's box. Again, another time card for me as well. However real or relevant time is, right? But it's the universe uh, turning in your favor. The wheel of time, they would say. The wheel of destiny. Luck, right? My wedding ring card or wish fulfillment uh, to, to some here. Yeah. So yeah, they're definitely wanting to invest in you here with um, their fortune, right? Yeah, so it's almost like they're putting all their eggs in one basket. You know, some people hate to say that, but then it's like, okay, well, you're going to scatter your energy all over the place instead of focusing on one thing to manifest, right? You're, if you're scattered brain, how are you going to get anything done? I think uh, Libra's reading was about 30 minutes long and Aquarius's reading was about 27 and a half minutes long or something like that. So I'll definitely will be fair here. Although I forgot to do a break deck message for Aquarius. That's probably why it was three minutes shorter. 
we're gonna do another and i flew through this reading <laughs> we're gonna do another break deck message for you what's the channel message spirit any jumpers in regards to love and romance here for a gemini what do they need to know in regards in regards to their current love energetics this romantic connection between them and their person how are their person going to be coming uh, towards them to communicate or to express what they need to express to their person at this time? What does the watcher need to know in regards to their person? What does their person want to communicate with them at this time through the break deck message? What's on the heart? What are the concerns or the matters of the heart for the watcher's person here at this time? So we got three cards. Technically, I have not gotten to the break deck message yet. Yeah, they wanted to deliver a message to you. We have Page of Bubbles, which is them crushing on you. Again, um, my apology, well, it's the collective apology card. It's the budding intuition here. I call it the muse card. Your person, yeah, your person views you as a muse. Mm -hmm. And then the night of storms, they're wanting to communicate with you here that they're resting their emotions on you, that they've been meditating on this connection here, that they've been refusing distractions, right? Turning down other romantic offers that do not benefit them. Mm -hmm. That's the channel message. Let's get the break deck message here for Gemini. Three of bubbles in a chariot. Yeah, they wanted to charge forward ahead with the chariot. It's, tra it's transportation, it's movement, it's willpower. They feel very strongly about this connection. Very sure about this connection. Cancerian energy. Again, it may be a cancer or a water sign, but they're deeply intuitive, right? They're very psychic. Again, hence your psychic link here, the king and queen of bubbles. And again, they're wanting to celebrate, right? The three of bubbles is a celebration or wanting to, you know, oh, you know what I'm getting? <laughs> oh, we can't end the reading without a, a, a channel music or like a joke here. I'm getting the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. What is that from? Is that from Barney? <laughs> yeah. So the third party car or I mean, I don't necessarily uh, think you have to worry about third parties. It's just your person wants to. They want this, this three of bubbles moment with you. They wanted to spend more time with you here. We already saw the two of cups showing in the reading, show up in the reading. And now we have the three of cups, right? They want to get more involved emotionally with you here. They're wanting to have more celebrations, more communications with you. All right? So that is what I have for you, Aquarius. I'm sorry, uh, Gemini. Yeah, you may want to watch Aquarius is reading for uh, today. Mm -hmm. Anything else before we close out the reading? Any jumpers here? Got the seven of embers. They're, they're very guarded and protective of this connection. They want this connection to persevere. We still have, you had a three of bubbles at the bottom of the deck. That's funny. Three plus seven, right? Although they're from two different suits, this is the completion, right? We saw nine of wands originally grounding the reading, and we did saw the nine of storms, which is the nervousness and the mental toxicity, the anxiety, you know, the nervousness, all that type of stuff. But we're going from a nine to a 10 to close out this reading, right? And this is how they're feeling about you, right? They're wanting to solidify this connection pretty much, kind of, is, is, is what I think they're wanting to get across, right? Because they're wanting to spend more time. They're wanting to build more loving energy with you here, more communication. And then, yeah, they're very protective over that time, over that energy, that love, that love and that communication. They, it's almost like they covered it here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I have for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the reading this evening, Air Signs. Catch you guys on the next one, Gemini. Peace.